Okay, uh, we're going to be doing a Spaghetti Bridges demo lab today. Uh, in this class, during our remote learning, we're going to be doing three, possibly four different types of quote-unquote labs. Uh, one type, which is the type we're going to be doing today, is going to be a demo type lab, a dry lab, where I do some kind of experiment for you and we take data on that experiment and then you process that data and create some kind of product, some kind of lab report. Another type will be a lab based on some kind of computer simulation. So maybe you've done FET labs or maybe you've used gizmos and uh, you do a sort of a lab on the computer, take data and produce some kind of lab report or other product. Another type is sort of a hybrid between the two. That would be a pivot lab where you're going to view a video of somebody doing a lab, but you'll be able to use measurement tools, software tools, to actually take measurements from the video itself and produce some kind of lab report based on measurements from a video using these software tools. And then the last type, um, it might be possible for you to do a lab using materials available to you at home. Uh, and I anticipate we won't do too many of those types of labs, but that's also a possibility. So this first lab is Spaghetti Bridges Lab. We're going to be evaluating the strength of different numbers of strands of this uh, sort of angel hair pasta. And to evaluate the strength of the pasta, we're going to be hanging a cup like this from the strand of pasta. Uh, where the strand of pasta is sort of spanning uh, the space between these two blocks, which are spaced 14 centimeters apart. And we're going to be adding pennies to the cup uh, until we find out the number of pennies it takes to break the strand. And we're going to be recording both the number of strands that are supporting the cup and the number of pennies that those strands can support before the strands break. So starting off with one penny, I'm going to drop that into the cup. I'm going to support the cup so that the impact of the penny on the bottom of the cup doesn't break the strand. We're not measuring that. So that's one penny. One penny, one strand. Two pennies. And oops, looks like it broke with two pennies. So you're going to record on your lab sheet, one strand and one penny, because the second penny actually broke the strand. So number of spaghetti strands, one. Number of pennies is one for trial one. And we'll go ahead and do that um, again for a second trial, just to make sure that that makes sense. More data is always better than less data. And we only have time maybe for two trials, but uh, we could do this even better if we had three, four, five trials for each number of strands. So here we go, one penny. And then see that the spaghetti strand can support that. And then we'll do two pennies. And yep, looks like that broke. Okay, so for the second trial, one strand of spaghetti, also one penny that it can support. Okay, now we'll do two strands of spaghetti and see how that works for us. So here's two strands of spaghetti. And I wanna make sure that those two strands of spaghetti are nice and lined up with the cup supported in the middle. And I'm gonna put one cup, uh, one penny in there. No surprise that gets supported. Now I'm gonna put two pennies in there. I can still support it with two strands of spaghetti. Here comes a third penny. Here comes the fourth penny. Still supported. Here comes the fifth penny. 
Here comes the sixth penny. Oh, and it breaks. It breaks on the sixth penny, so it can support five pennies for trial one. Let's try this one more time with two strands of spaghetti. And we'll go one penny, two pennies. Whoa! That broke with only two pennies. Two strands of spaghetti. That must be weak, but we got to put that down. I'm thinking that might be a little anomalous. That is so far off what we got the first time. I think it would be good in this case to do a third trial and see if that was an outlier. Maybe we just had a piece of spaghetti. One of the strands was weak for some reason, unnaturally weak. So I think I want to repeat that. And anytime you get something that's really weird, it's always good to repeat the experiment. So I think I'm gonna call that one an outlier. And I'm gonna try and do this experiment again with two strands of spaghetti to see if I can get something closer to the first result. I mean, it's possible that uh, the first result, trial one was an outlier. We had two pieces of spaghetti that were unnaturally strong for some reason, okay? So I'm gonna try again with one Penny, two pennies, ah, see it's holding up here, three pennies, ah, it's holding up, I think that second trial was an outlier, four pennies, and five pennies, And then finally, six pennies. See if it breaks on the sixth penny. Oh, it's, uh, it's holding at six pennies. Let's try seven pennies. Okay, now it broke. Okay, so that was six pennies. So I would be inclined to uh, ignore the second trial of two pennies. I think maybe... One of the spaghetti strands might have had a fracture in it or was unnaturally weak. So we can continue on this experiment with three, four, five, six, seven, eight strands of spaghetti. And I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to do it on camera because I think you get the idea on how this experiment's going to work. I'm just going to share the data for the rest of the number of strands of spaghetti with you. Okay, here's our final data set. Uh, notice that on trial number two, I crossed out the, the original second trial number of two and uh, substituted in the third trial, which was six, and I circled that. It's not a bad idea in your data tables to even include just the raw data, even the things that maybe you're going to throw out later. Uh, just so that you're not throwing away any data, even bad data. So go ahead and take a minute and copy that data down onto your table.